Hey everybody, this is the Work Happier Podcast, the place for you to get hired and paid doing work you love. My name is Shodawan, and all I want for you is for you to be happy. I spent the last decade working in HR, recruitment, and career development. I'm gonna share with you everything that I know, everything that I've always preached in my videos. I hope this podcast helps you as well. For this episode, let's bust the four biggest job search myths because there's so much nonsense out there, guys. There's just so much BS, fear-mongering articles out there to scare you, to keep you stuck, to make you feel like you're not good enough and you'll never be good enough. All that is BS, okay? I'm here to tell you, you are gonna be fine. You are gonna land that job. You are gonna stand out and get paid what you deserve. But maybe the first step is you understanding the myths that I'm gonna tell you, that they're all lies, that they're all BS. That's what I want you to start thinking, that the job search in place, that the recruiters you're working with, the hiring system, it's in your favor, okay? Because that leads me to the first myth, the applicant tracking system is out to get you. The ATS is out to get you. How many times have you heard that? If you've never worked in HR, if you've never worked in recruitment, I can understand why that is a fear, because that is a valid fear. You hear this crazy thing called the ATS and you think, okay, there's this robot that's gonna be automatically checking my resume and rejecting me even before I have a chance, right? That's what you think? That's false. That's false, my friend. At the end of the day, the ATS is like an organizing tool, okay? So like, for example, think of how you organize your documents in your computer. The ATS, that is that organizer for recruiters. The ATS just helps them keep track of all the candidates that they're dealing with. Okay, so an ATS will never auto-reject you, will never say that you're a bad culture fit. That's all gonna be done still by a human. What the ATS is there is just organizing your data in a way so recruiters can quickly sift through the tons of material they have, all the candidate profiles, and quickly find somebody. So for example, let's say I'm hiring for a data scientist role and I have 500 different candidates that want this role, right? So for me, as a recruiter, I can go to the ATS and I can put in, I want, I'm looking for these skills in data, Python, and Tableau. And then because the ATS sifts through all your information through your resume, it might say, these are the candidates that have these keywords in their profile. So at the end of the day, the recruiter still has to put in the work and see what are the skills they're looking for, what are the qualities they're looking for, and hopefully if you write your resume in a right way and optimize for the role, your resume will pop up. But the ATS is not out to get you. Even the recruiter is not out to get you. These tools are in place to help you connect to the hiring manager and move on into the interview process. All right, the second myth that we'll go into is one resume is all you need. I'll maybe even counteract this and say sometimes one resume is all you need. If you are a specialized data scientist and you have 10 plus years of experience doing just data and you only wanna stay in data roles, yeah, maybe one resume is all you need. And you also went to great schools and got all the skills and got all the certifications for data roles, you got one resume, you can probably apply to a few different data scientists, data analyst roles, and you'll probably get the position with that one resume. But for the majority of regular people, <laughs> for the majority of people like me and you, sometimes you don't just wanna get one role. Sometimes you have interest in doing this and doing that and doing something else. Because of that, because of the human nature of careers and going for different things, you are going to want two, three, maybe four different resumes. I don't want you to have more than 10. Don't go crazy here. But if you can tailor your resume for a specific role, that is best. Let's say again that I'm going back to the data scientist role. Like I'm interested in a data scientist position. I'm also interested in a marketing analytics position. I'm also interested in a website optimization in data role. Let's just say that, right? All three of them have some key elements about data, but they're gonna be pretty different in terms of who's reading this. So because of that, I do encourage you to have maybe three different resumes where you take from the job description in each, and then to alter your, alter your story accordingly. That is gonna give you the best chances for you getting an interview. Let's go into myth number three. You need to add a cover letter. I, I wanna start off and say, most times you don't need this, 
But there are going to be times you need a damn cover letter. I, that That's just the name of the game, guys. I read this post on Instagram recently. It was like a, a meme post. But it pretty much said that when someone applied with a resume and a cover letter, the hiring manager actually responded through email and said, hey, let's get an interview scheduled on this date. By the way, great cover letter. That's the reason you got the interview. So that can sometimes happen, right guys? Like sometimes you will want to add a cover letter to really bolster your chances. But to say you need to add a cover letter to every role, that is a myth. That just flat out not true. Because I've had, I don't know how many different jobs in my career, maybe close to 10 different jobs ever since internships all the way now, 10 plus different jobs I've had. Out of all those jobs, maybe I've written one cover letter for them, for them. Maybe two, especially in my early days. But after you have experience, you don't really need a cover letter, especially if you have a resume that is tailored for the role. Um, if you have a killer story that's directly related to the role, directly related to the brand or the company, of course, write it. It's going to help you. But if you're just writing a cover letter that's just a copy and paste using ChatGPT, using AI that you use for everyone, recruiters are probably tired of that. Okay, sometimes a bad cover letter can actually hurt you more than a good letter can help you, if, if that if that makes sense. But my rule of thumb is focus on the resume first, focus on the LinkedIn profile, focus on other elements besides the cover letter. If you have time and it's a number one company for you and you're like, I really wanna work there, fair enough. Write that cover letter, have some fun with it, make it creative, don't just do the copy and paste that everyone else does, okay? And the last myth I'm going to tell you, probably the biggest myth, don't DM the recruiter. Maybe you've heard this from, I don't know, your parents or from ex-recruiters and they're like, don't DM us because we're going to put you in the don't hire list and we'll never respond. All of that is BS. Will there be some recruiters that don't like being DM'd? Will there be some hiring managers that don't like being emailed? Maybe. Right? At the end of the day, we're working with human beings and you can't make a general blanket statement for everybody. But I can tell you from my experience as a recruiter, as a hiring manager, as somebody who's just helped a lot of people in this game, most of our clients have some interaction with the recruiter or the hiring manager even before the interview. So you might be asking, how was that, how is that interaction happening if they don't have the interview scheduled? Sometimes they DM the recruiter. Sometimes they cold email the hiring manager. Sometimes they have a friend of a friend connect this person to a hiring manager or somebody else who works at the company. That is the secret sauce to getting hired at some of these great companies that you want to work for. Because they get so many applications, because they get so many resumes, sometimes it is that, that, that warm connection that they have to somebody else, to a human being that can humanize the process, right? Because if if recruiters have 500 resumes that they're reviewing, but they remember, oh yeah, Cole from San Diego sent me a nice DM congratulating me on my promotion. Or Ashley from New York um, sent me a DM saying they went to the same school. Like that's that's a human personalized touch. And if you think back to your own experiences working with friends, working with coworkers, working with people uh, in, in your career, the people you think of, when you think of your favorite people to work with, they probably weren't just the best workers. They were probably the best people too, right? They're probably good humans. And that's what recruiters, at the end of the day, that's what they look for. They want to work with people who make work fun and light and playful. So this notion of you not DMing the recruiter because it's going to make you look bad, that's bullshit, okay? You want to build deep connections with people. What I don't encourage you to do is send out DMs expecting a response, expecting an interview. I want you to craft out messages that are gonna help the recruiter know that you have the right skills and are genuinely interested in this role. If the recruiter can feel that, they are 10 times more likely to respond to that DM. I hope those explanations helped you learn the truth behind these myths. You probably have a lot of other myths out there that have been thrown your way. If you want me to debunk those next, email us at podcast at wordcap.com. Let us know the myths that you've heard. Put it down to this into this video of all the myths that you heard. I will make a reply video debunking them or maybe even confirming them. You never know, right? Again, people are people, humans are humans, and they're going to do what they do. With that said, hope you enjoyed this episode of the Work Happier Podcast with Shodawan. I will see you next week, my friend. All right? Take care.